hey hey y'all and welcome so today's video is actually part two of a Q&A I did part one and it was more of the get to know you kind of questions some homeschooling questions life in general kind of questions I'll link that in the description box in case you want to go watch that and hear my answers to those questions get to know us a little bit better and I went ahead and separated out the mobile home related questions and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Tiffany, if you're new. Uh, if you're new, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome. I'm Tiffany. This is our small town life. And around here, we like to share what life looks like for us living in a small town here in Alabama. We're a family of seven. We live in a double wide mobile home on a one acre homestead. And we share all of that here on this channel. And here recently, I did a mobile home tour showing you around our home and I got some questions and I'm going to sit down and answer those for you today. Let's just get started, shall we? So the first question I got was the paint colors in our home. So this darker gray that's on the top of the walls in our living room and our dining room, that is called gauntlet gray. I wrote them down again just to make sure I told you right. I'm pretty sure they're Sherwin-Williams colors and it's called gauntlet gray. And then the color that's on the bottom, and we have this, this is like the main color in our home. It's on the bottom and it's coming across maybe even a little bit darker in video than what it is. I don't know that maybe that's pretty true to color. Maybe it's just a little bit lighter, but it's called silver point and we have it along the bottom in our living room and in our dining room. It's on the walls in our kitchen, down our hallway and in our den. That's like the main color that we used and I love it. I love that color. It's definitely like that silvery gray and it just feels so bright and open. I will say I've got five kids and the places that get touched the most, those kinds of things, you definitely see it. it's like going down the hallway, but I like it. It's a really beautiful color. It's that light without being white, you know, so that's those colors. And then in our bedroom, and I'll try to insert a clip so that you can see this color. Maybe I'll even go back to that very original mobile home tour and try to get that clip when there's nothing else in the room and you can see that color pretty well, but it is called Dorian gray and it's kind of an in-between. It's not as dark as this gauntlet gray and it's not as light as this silver point. It's in between and it's a very pretty color as well. Someone asked, with the skirting around the home, how do we keep our pipes from freezing? Now, where we live, we do not get like extremely cold temperatures. <laughs> now, we do every once in a while. So, just a few weeks ago, we had single digits with negative wind chill. But that's not our regular. That's not our normal, I guess. That's not something that we experience on a regular basis. Even then, though, we do get freezing or below freezing temps from time to time and I'm not gonna say we've never had problems with our pipes freezing I would have to ask Justin but I feel like there is some kind of insulation that we put over them that wrapped around the pipes that's enough for like where we live and the conditions we have there was there's one spot so just a couple weeks ago when we had those really cold temperatures there was one spot that froze and it was where some of the dirt, I think, had kind of washed out from around the skirting and the wind was blowing up in it and hitting it right there in that one spot. That's the only time we've had to deal with, or that's the only place where we have had to deal with frozen pipes. And Justin just put some extra insulation there. Maybe if you live somewhere where the temperatures were a lot, lot colder on a more regular basis, it might be something that you would need to consider extra insulation or maybe a different kind of you know, maybe you would put brick or something like that around the bottom of your home, which is absolutely possible. You can do that. You can brick it. You can use block. The skirting works fine for us, though. Did we get the electrical fixed? That's something that I had talked about, and we did. We got that fixed. Getting some of those things fixed around the home. So when you buy a mobile home, it's probably going to have, even when it's you know brand new, there's probably still going to be things that have to be worked on. Some things that have to be fixed or changed after it's delivered to you. That kind of comes with anything though. I think anytime you purchase a new home or build a new home that 
you're going to have those things. I will say our personal experience, there were several things that were fixed really quickly. And then there are some things that have drug on. And I don't know if it's, I don't know. I don't know what the cause for that is. There are a few things. And as a matter of fact, it's on my list today uh, while I'm thinking about it and it's fresh on my mind to send another email and say, hey, can we please get these last few things taken care of? Should it have drug on this long? Absolutely not. <laughs> and I think maybe it's like, um, some kind of communication problem between the dealership and the home builders. Don't know. I've heard other people say that they've had the same thing happen. That doesn't mean that that's what happens for everybody. And it's not something that we've, you know, not been able to just work through. Like we're working through it, but it's been a little frustrating. And there are a few things that still need to be done. It'll get done. It'll get done. The electrical, though, has been fixed. Pretty much everything has been done and been done for a while. There's just those few last, those few last little things. <laughs> How does it do during a storm? And so far, so good. We do get storms here. We have tornadoes, tornado warnings, watches, wind storms, high winds, and it's done great. Now, we do have, and someone else asked, where do we go in a storm? Like, do we stay here? If it's like a tornado warning, then we would go somewhere else, especially you know, watching the weather close and understanding the patterns, those kinds of things. But my mom lives next door and they have a brick home, so we could go there. They don't have a basement or anything, but we could go and be in that brick home. And we've done that before. My pawpaw's not very far away and he has what we call a storm pit here in the South. <laughs> Some people have storm pits and we can go there and get in that. And then there's also, so several years ago, goodness, how long has it been now? Probably like 11 years ago or so, there were some pretty severe, very severe tornadoes that came through. And after that, extra storm shelters were put in. So in the town that's maybe three minutes from us, five minutes from us, there is a storm shelter, a public storm shelter that we could go and get in as well. We've never done that, though. We've never gone and gotten that public storm shelter because we do have family that's close that has brick homes or basements or a storm pit. And eventually, I would like to have something put here. And my mom, she's talked about that as well, have it doing something here. My dad, he lives in a mobile home. He lives in a double wide, and he put in his own storm pit. And I'd like to do something similar, I think. So we had somewhere that was just right here that we could go and get. Do your floors squeak? And they said that they had some spots in their floor that would squeak. So when the home was delivered, I think before we even moved anything in, I noticed a few spots that squeaked. And I'm trying to remember, trying to remember like details now, but if I remember correctly, they fixed them and fixed them pretty easily. There was one that was beside a vent. And if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, they fixed that for us and fixed it pretty quick quick and easy and I don't really notice any spots now that squeak somebody asked where we got our bed frame and our bedding and it's just they say we're looking for something that was just really simple like that and that is it's a real simple bed frame I ordered it off of Amazon and I'm pretty sure it's in my favorites in my Amazon storefront that'll be in the description box super simple you don't have to have a box spring or anything with it and the reason why I chose that was because I wanted something that was, one, affordable, two, pretty simple. And if I ever decided I wanted to go and make my own, like, DIY headboard or just buy an extra headboard, I could do that with this. And so, I love that bed frame. And then the bedding I got on sale at Belk. I don't know if they still have it. Because, like I said, I caught it when it was on sale. But that's where that came from. How much can you customize in mobile homes? And that's really going to depend on the builder that you go with. Ours is a Hamilton. And there were, I mean, there were a good bit of things that we could customize and upgrades that we could make as well. So some of them are just customizations that you make. And then some are upgrades that come with an extra fee or extra charge. There were several different siding options. 
And then like inside, there were several different paint colors that we could choose from. It wasn't like you could just go and pick any color you want and say, hey, put this in the home, but they had several different colors to choose from. There are different things you can customize. So like under our um, kitchen island, there were several different options for that. You could do the wood like we've done. And then there were, I think, three different shades of stain that you could choose from. You could choose those stain colors in the beams as well. You could also do a rock. You could do a brick look. There were a few different options there. Same thing around the fireplace. Your cabinets, there were four, four or five different color options for cabinets that you could choose from. You could choose to do your top cabinets and your bottom cabinets different. You could do the island a different color. You could do tile. So like our shower, that was an upgrade, but we chose to do the tile in the shower. And then... Even, like, and I didn't do this, but my dad, they actually flipped the floor plan because of the way they were going to be positioning the home on their property and where they wanted to park their cars, those kinds of things. They actually flipped the floor plan and had the laundry room and all of that on one end, which is where they park and come in. And so that was something that they could do. Some homes or some home builders will let you swap out that board and batten type wall, like trailer wall for sheetrock. Hamilton Homes would not let us do that. Some rooms have these walls here, all the main living spaces, and then the master bedroom. The kids' bedrooms, the bathrooms, and the laundry room all have that board and batten type wall that people seem to like think of when they think of mobile homes. And they would not let us upgrade and have that sheetrocked. They wanted us to, if you wanted an all she rocked home, they wanted you to go with their sister company that's a more expensive home, and that's what they do in those homes. So that actually wasn't an option for us with these home builders. Some places I think it is. And so we were originally like, well, we'll just go back and sheet rock the kids' rooms ourselves later. I don't mind those other walls. Now that we have them, I actually, <laughs> I like them. How hard was the ordering process for the double, double wide and how long did it take? Let me go ahead and tell you that I do have a playlist that's going with us through this whole process from the very, very beginning when we were looking at homes through having our home delivered and moving in. There's videos that cover all of those things. Some of them are like, hey, come look at homes with us, vlog type videos. Some of them are sitting down. Let me give you an update and tell you where things are at. These are some hangups that we're having. These are some things that are going really well. So there's a lot of really good information in that playlist. And it will be linked in the description box for you. Trying to think back. And again, if you want like more specific real time kind of updates, go check out that playlist. Overall, it took about probably two to three months from when we ordered it to when it was delivered to the lot, to the dealership. And then it took another couple weeks for them to bring it out to our property. And then it took another couple weeks for them to get everything set up. The, all the marriage lines done, the skirting, us to have somebody come in and do all the plumbing and the electrical, that took another couple of weeks. So it, while like in the moment, there were definitely times where it felt like, is this gonna drag on forever? you know, is anything happening <laughs> or we would run into those things or it's like we had to have our perk test for our septic tank done twice for different reasons. And those, in those moments, it felt very frustrating and it felt like, are we ever going to actually be in this home? Now that we're here and like looking back on it, I feel like everything worked out pretty well. Do we recommend a mobile home or manufactured home for living on a homestead or living the homestead lifestyle. Absolutely. I think it's a great option. And I also had some people say that they were thinking about mobile homes as they were wanting to downsize or get ready for retirement and those kinds of things. I definitely recommend a mobile home. It was something that was pretty easy for us to put out here. I also had someone ask why we chose a mobile home or manufactured home over a site built home. And the reasoning for that is we could get in the home much quicker, especially during the time that we were trying to order a home. Times for getting contractors or even just ordering things 
to put inside in in a home materials appliances all those things the wait time even to get started was so it was so so long and this was something that we could get in much quicker it was also something that was more affordable we could get more space so we're in a four bedroom two bath home with a separate living room and den as well as a walk-in pantry a walk-in closet a nice big kitchen and the amount of space that we have in this home it would have cost us significantly more for to put these things that we have here in this home in a site built home and it works great here on our little homestead we can walk right into our laundry room and pull our boots off we've got a great big utility sink where we can fill up waters or wash things uh, we have these beautiful sliding doors off of our porch so we can walk straight out into our garden it's just it's working great for us and then the last question is if I was gonna name just a few pros and cons what would they be and for pros we definitely got more home for our money purchasing this double wide and we were also able to get into our home much quicker than we would a site built home which is something our family needed in the season of life we were in and the situation we were in, the sooner we could get into it, the better. And this helped us with that. I also really liked picking out all of our paint colors and our cabinets and our countertops and those kinds of things, the options that were available to us. I feel like we had a good choice to choose from and it was fun making this a place that was what our family wanted it to be. And I know buying an older home is great as well. I mean, it has character and it has stories to tell. And then you can go in and make those spaces your own, do makeovers and things. And that can be really fun. But I just enjoyed, this is the first time that we'd ever purchased a new home. And I enjoyed getting to make it our own space. And then for cons, you know, there are those last few things that we're trying to get taken care of. Those last few things that need to be repaired or fixed. And that can be a little frustrating. Uh, and also, I guess there are a few spots where... So it's a mobile home. It's a manufactured home. It's built quickly. The kids are in there playing. It's built quickly. And there are some things that because it is more affordable, they're built more affordably. I'm not saying that they're cheap by any means, but maybe it's not the highest of high quality. So there are a few things that we want to go back and change, maybe upgrade it a little bit. There's been some spots where some trim pieces we've had to go back in and put some extra nails those kinds of things. We also have five children and pets and a homestead and things get banged and used a lot. So I'm sure some of those trim pieces come off because they're hit constantly, you know. It may be some things that people would, some people would never even notice, but for our family, <laughs> we do. So there are a few things where we've had to go back and, like I said, add a few extra nails or some things that maybe we're going to up upgrade to something that's a little bit higher quality, but just because that's what will serve our family best. I hope you found this video helpful and that I was able to answer those questions well for you. Don't forget to go check out that playlist that I mentioned because I feel like it will provide you with a whole lot of extra information, a lot of extra good knowledge and kind of being there with us in real time as things were happening for us to get into this home. I love you. I appreciate you. If you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button down below and join our crew, join what we have going on around here. I love you. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.